Okay, I I'm gonna dive in then. Uh, let's see. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I have, of course, uh, turn this off again. All right, uh, so welcome to Skulljagger Revolt of the Westicans, a uh, SNES title. Um, and yeah, the, the story is Storm Jackson, uh, that's us, uh, the, car uh, the player. We try to free the island of Westica of uh, evil caused by Skulljagger, who is uh, the evil guy behind all, all of this. So yeah, that's the story. Uh, I'll gradually uh, fill you in on the details here. Um, with the story, uh, I, at least I hope because the story is pretty expensive, uh, but I'll dive into that later. Um, so yeah, I, I'm just gonna go and ahead and just uh, start it, I guess. Right, let's do this. Um, good luck, everybody. Have a nice trip through the uh, uh, yeah through the world of Vesica. Okay, here we go. So, the story starts off with uh, Skulljagger losing his sword and Storm Jackson, well, sort of steals the sword and of course Skulljagger wants his sword back, so here we go. Um, Skulljagger is, uh, as you can see, some, yeah, a bit of a platform type of game where you wave your short, uh, sword, fight enemies and you collect these gems. And there are uh, red and green gems. Um, so the red gems, they are the stronger ones, they also serve as projectiles so you can do long distance uh, fi uh, sh shots and stuff. Um, but yeah, both also serve to keep you alive. It's a kind of, um, I guess, it, it works like the uh, like Sonic, I guess, with the rings. Except um, if you do um, lose them, you don't get to keep them. So that's a bit unfortunate. Right here we go. I pass a blue uh, gem, which is a checkpoint. So if I die here, I will start over from that point. And yeah, uh, Western Cat totally does not look like North America, does it? Well known that Storm Jackson loves blue gems. Yeah, yeah, Storm Jackson loves his gems, it's true. So I uh, also picked up a bubble gum here, um, this cherry bubble gum. Um, and this is an orange one. So yeah, uh, there are all types of bubble gum, and I hope to show some of these to you. Like, um, one we'll be seeing very often and which will be very effective against uh, bosses is the Grape Bubblegum. It will be an absolute killer of uh, Bubblegum. You'll see that uh, very soon also. There we go. Just about every really difficult part of the run is going to be controlled by how Jingle Storm collects the gum, what flavor he's using, and how frequently he's using it. Uh, the boss fights in particular are extremely dangerous in this game and extremely RNG heavy, but a lot of them can be completely dodged by using the right gum. Also, check out that face. Yeah, that, that, that face. That absolute epic winner face, yeah. And uh, yeah, if uh, all uh, goes well, I'll be able to take out five of the seven bosses with just a great bubble gun. So yeah, it's a lot of action that I would be skipping here, uh, which you would normally uh, be seeing. And it also includes uh, the final fight, but yeah, I'm gonna talk some more about it later as we get there. Uh, so now we are in this uh, warehouse um, and we are surrounded by all kinds of Kiltish army and uh, people throwing skulls at me. I mean, why would they do that? I'm not sure. <laughs> Picking up this... Uh, yeah, so this is the Great Bubble Gum. I will actually be using it in this... Uh... Oh, my uh, inputs were eaten for some reason. <laughs> So yeah, sometimes with these checkpoints, if you don't... Uh, oh, let's talk about it later. First, I'm gonna be using this bubble gum here to get myself onto this uh, platform. And basically, I can just waltz over every single enemy there is. Like, that's the easiest thing ever. So that gives a bit of an indication how powerful this is. And here we go. Of course, quite a few of the... In addition to being really good for killing the enemies, the purple bubble gum makes you really bouncy. Yeah. Which is incredibly difficult to control, but it does let you like clip through ceilings in some places. Uh, and it's especially effective against bosses. 
Yeah, it's, it's very effective against the uh, bosses. Uh, it, it's actually, um, that, that bounciness is actually really hard to control. Um, just, uh, and it's also relatively slow. So if you just want to get over um, like pits or something and you want to regain speed afterwards, you will have to wait a little while until the uh, effect is worn off. So, uh, yeah, what it just said in the narrative, by the way, was that Skulljacker still wants his sword back. He is, like, really pissed. So, and of course, uh, we're not gonna let him have the sword because it's uh, great. So, I will be picking up this specific Grape Gun because this is the one that I'll be using in uh, the boss fight that's uh, gonna happen in the next stage. There we go. Gotta make sure to take out these enemies because their hitboxes tend to be, uh... Skulljagger, of course, also has access to endless armies of bugs, bats, ninjas, pirates, and everything else you can imagine. Yeah, he, he has and so ghosts. many of them. Oh yeah, um, so, uh, if you pick up multiple gems, I haven't explained this yet, but if you pick up green gems, and if you pick up, uh, 25 of them, you will get an extra life. Now, the chances of this are not very likely, but, uh, yeah. So that's one reason really to pick them up and see if you can at least get there. So uh, now that I've done this, <laughs> uh, let's explain how I would normally do this. I would walk back and then uh, face him, attack him and repeat it over and over again until he's dead. So there we go. So chapter 2, we are sneaking onto a gemerald ship. Those gems are actually called uh, gemeralds. So yeah, uh, this game also has a password system, uh, which is based on words, so you uh, fill those in. And this was Cruel Man, Cruel Bird. What a lovely password. Okay, it took a bit of uh, damage there, but it's fine. So the passwords are actually kind of cool. They do these, uh, like a word combination game. The password screen has like 16 words, and then you make sentences out of them as your passwords. Yeah. The big bummer about the password system in this game is that the final third of the game does not actually have passwords to get to those stages. So if Jingle Storm takes enough deaths at the end of the game, he's going to use a password to go back to like chapter 4 of 7. Uh, yeah, actually it takes you back to chapter 5. Uh, you do get um, uh, passwords for the first four chapters. So if you use the final one, you'll be sent to the uh, beginning of uh, chapter 5. And then you still have to play like three uh, three chapters worth of gameplay, but uh, yeah, it, it gets you somewhere. I have literally no idea why they did that, but yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> maybe there's a, maybe it, there is secretly a password for the final chapters. Who knows? So I picked up this invincibility mask, um, which sort of makes me yeah invincible. Um, and also, I, yeah, it doesn't really make me do anything else, so I kind of have to wait till its effect wears off and I'm in fact able to climb ropes again. I'll be specifically picking up this grape for use with uh, the boss in this chapter, which will actually be coming up in two stages, so I have to carry it with me for quite a while. But that's fine because, uh, well, this is the end of this level at least. Alright, so we're off the chi uh, ship and we're back on solid ground again and we're chased by a Kiltish warrior apparently according to the story. So this is way for the first uh, here for the first time how the music really works. Those tunes are really kind of cool really, but the thing is they're not implemented very creatively I think. It's like they basically all they did was pitched it up and down and uh, that sort of repeats itself throughout the entire game. Also, you can't uh, actually control those cannons, um, which I didn't find, uh, knew about until later, but uh, yeah, uh, they're only useful really to take out those enemies all the way in the back, but um, yeah, it's only really for, as far as I know, um, gems and stuff, so yeah, you might just as well pick them up from around here.
Yeah, the base is... Uh, this is one of those games where like every enemy is super dangerous, but these dudes with the armor and the crossbows in particular are dangerous the entire way through the run. Yeah, well, some of them actually uh, do tend to shoot as soon as you uh, encounter them. Uh, some of the, yeah, there are, are others that do throw grenades, for instance. But yeah, so this uh, is the second boss. We take him out literally the same way as we did the first one, which was, by the way, the first time we encountered Skull Jagger. And uh, yeah, the basic thing is with this rat, he moves a little bit faster, so it doesn't really do just to move the like before and uh, take him out like that. But uh, yeah, yeah. Using that orange gun does help because it sort of spits out these uh, orange bullets. And now we get to the jungle. The Westigan jungle. We encounter more exciting enemies. Oh crap. <laughs> it's fine though. Still no deaths, which, uh, which is uh, nice. Oh crap. So what I just did there by accident was I went, I took myself to a secret stage. Um, so yeah, Skulljager has those too, but it, uh, the, the game has this, but um, there's no real telling where they actually are. You have to find out for yourself. So I'm, I'm getting myself out of here because I don't really want to spend too long there, but uh, yeah. Oh, okay, that's my first death. Thankfully, I just uh, saved at the checkpoint, so just gotta make sure to keep my lives uh, as much as possible. Means I gotta be a bit more careful around these uh, places. So if you time it well enough, you can actually take out those uh, bullets that they fired, and uh, that's a way to get past them. So let's see. Oh. Okay. This is... Oh, wait. Yeah, so this is a part where I usually wait for the first two flies to appear if I don't have any uh, gems. Um, and I'll be trying that in a minute. Again, here we go. There we go, and the third one appears over here. And yay, we've got another red gem. This is a very death-heavy run as well, so it's important to note that Jingle Storm is going to die several times. The game's very unfair, uh, particularly when we get into chapter, I think it's five, when we start seeing ghosts. The ghosts are really nasty. The ghosts appear in uh, chapter six. That's when we get to the lost city of Urnum, and that's uh, yeah, that's uh, where straight, real, the real strange stuff happens. Yeah, the jiggly sound. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice uh, sound. Yeah. All right. Uh, now we are in a prison, and it kind of looks exactly the same as the warehouse, except it has a couple more uh, prison bars and uh, prison doors. So yeah. Apart apart from that, it seems like an extension of the warehouse. Watch out for falling objects. <laughs> Okay, because we still got gems, so this is fine. Grabbing this checkpoint here. So these platforms are always super well aligned. I'm always it's it's so cool to see. Like if you just run all the way through, it always uh, works like that. No surprises there. Down we go. So also, uh, these enemies that you see there, um, sort of dancing around, I guess, uh, those are called, I think, uh, Black Mask um, Snipers, I think. I usually call them Flying Ninjas, because that's more or less what they look like, like to me. There we go. Oh crap. <laughs> those, those chains. I could just as well do this, let myself uh, drop off there and just uh, hang on to it. Easiest thing ever. Alright, so that was Prism.
So also what the game doesn't really tell is that Storm Jackson doesn't really travel alone, but he travels with a gang. Um, let's see if I can tell more about that in a minute. First I have to get past this. There we go. So normally if I don't have any gems, I kind of have to wait there, otherwise I will be hit by one of those skulls. And uh, since the hitboxes are kind of mean, I have to make sure um, to make that as safely as possible. Anyway, seems we're good for now. So yeah, um, Storm Jackson is not traveling alone, he is actually traveling with his best friend Wits and uh, his best friend's um, half-sister called Trina. And they're like the only three people who know the word Ingawa, which is uh, basically this greeting uh, that they uh, do. There we go. So that, that one has an orange uh, grape, uh, orange gun, which I'm not going to pick up because I will be again uh, using this uh, grape uh, bubble gum here. I'm going to grab the gem. Has a claws. The claws are at times really, 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 really bad. But if you're careful enough, you can uh, sort of avoid them pretty easily. <clears throat> Great therapy. All right. So um, we'll be doing the same thing again to Skulljagger. We basically do uh, just let him have the taste of Great Bubblegum. So normally if I don't have the Great Bubblegum, I would stand on those barrels and duck and hit him. Um, and that of course takes quite a bit longer, but it does the trick as well and it's relatively safe. And yes, he can walk in the air for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> Big wild angry fly. And we're back in another village. Wonderful. Yeah, so th these were the flying ninjas that I was uh, referring to because, you know, they're doing all those moves and... Uh, yeah, they, they just... That was the first thing I was thinking about when seeing them. And yeah, th as you can see, there's quite a bit of lag in this game. Especially when there are uh, many, many enemies uh, on the same screen. And that's gonna be especially worse in Chapter 6 when we encounter the ghosts, as uh, Kual uh, just uh, mentioned. But yeah, that's a, <laughs> a common thing here. Oh crap, should pay attention there. But we are at the end anyway, so... <laughs> Big bad game thong. All right, we're getting closer to the lighthouse, uh, which is where we are heading right now. But first, we are encountering snacks. The village areas are actually really weird. The game doesn't handle uh, vertical tolerance very well. All right, so yeah, I'm just uh, taking them out from a distance because uh, they sort of tend to stick their necks out, and that's. Uh, yeah, that's something you don't, you don't want to see, really. Also, this level introduces you to jerkbirds with coconuts that they throw at you. What a rude birds. So many of them. <laughs> well, actually, there's gonna be lots of uh, bugs as well, but... Uh... Right, up the hill we go. Oh yeah, you see, you see that um, fly over there? There is a tendency of flies to really act strangely and very randomly, so... We will see in... Uh, hopefully we'll see very soon um, how they can sort of act. So past this checkpoint, I go over here and a couple of platforms, and you see one of them appear. But they never seem to appear in the same way. It's always like they do very different things. And it's especially difficult if you have died once and you have to do this without uh, gems. Then it seems... It, I remember when I was routing this that it was a really hard, uh, quite a difficult uh, thing to do here. Uh, 
And so we enter the lighthouse. Do you, uh, you might want to ask yourself, uh, does it look different from uh, the other indoor places? No, not exactly. Although it has bigger windows and you can actually have a very nice view, but yeah. It seems like a pretty big lighthouse as well. There we go. Oh yeah, we can just like <laughs> let them roll. Nothing to see here. Some of these rats, that's fine as well. Let's see if we can make it onto this platform. Nope. I tried. Gold star. So you might want to wonder, um, you see these uh, enemies sort of uh, load themselves, they're sort of hanging in the air for a brief bit before they actually start attacking. I'm not sure why that is, it seems like they sort of were still in the programming stage and uh, sort of forgot to take it out, like, oh yeah, wait, they were supposed to uh, attack. <laughs> I I'm not sure how that works, but the funny thing is, um, up until they, the moment they hit the ground, you cannot actually do damage to them. So they're so they're so, uh, they're sort of invincible up until that point. <laughs> what is a lighthouse for the prison for lamps? Yeah, exactly. Right, so this is actually uh, the only chapter where we can't fight the boss with a grape gum. It is actually uh, it actually is quite a different setup, really, because um, what we will be having here is a boss fight against a group of battle dogs. How does that work, you ask? Well, you'll see. Let's see. I do have enough gems, so basically what I do is I let him disappear first, then I'm gonna jump in, grab this gum. And this is another type of gum that we haven't seen before. This basically lets you bounce all around the room and take out... Take, it'll take out the whole room of enemies, basically. So that's uh, that tends to be pretty handy in certain situations, uh, especially here. So this leaves a couple more battle dogs, and these are actually the ones with the most health. So, yeah. Partially because of this, it tends to be quite a bit of a longer fight. And I have to make sure that I don't lose my gems uh, by sheer accident. Uh, oh, there we go. That was uh, scary. <laughs> See, I, I always thought that I despawned them, which is actually something that does happen at some point, or, or which has happened to me in the past with uh, certain bosses. They just don't show up anymore. It's like, okay, we've, uh, we've had fun, but goodbye. Okay, two more hits, and we should be good. Boom. Fly home lazy sword, and that's gonna be our final password. This will have to last us throughout chapters 5, 6, and 7. But first, chapter 5, where we go and encounter more birds, and we slowly get towards uh, the ruins, the volcanic ruins. I'm gonna make sure to uh, not to take too, too much damage from these uh, birds because they're everywhere. But seriously, like everywhere. Oh crap! Yeah, see that's that's what happens. But I still have a couple. Of... Never mind. I was gonna say I still have a couple of green gems, but sometimes that even uh, doesn't happen or stops happening. So there we go. I tend to stand on the low, uh, on the left uh, side of that platform uh, because I'm usually able to avoid the coconut that's uh, thrown at me there. And these birds, whatever. Feel the base, feel the base, right?
Mm, didn't quite grab it, but it's fine. I already have uh, a red gem, so I will be able to uh, fire off projectiles uh, right now. This section tends to be tricky because, you know, they tend to lie down and you sort of have to lie down or sort of have to duck in order to uh, take them out. The funny thing is with um, ducking and attacking is, um, if you do it the one way, you know, uh, first attack and then duck, it doesn't register your sword attack, but if you do it the other way around, you duck first and then attack, it seems to uh, attack. Then it seems to do the sword attack correctly. Um, this does not count for um, the red gems because uh, those will fire regardless. And yes, you might have probably heard the tune before. It's another one of those uh, variations, quote unquote. Oh crap. So this also tends to be one of those tricky spots really. Um, if you don't nearly take out enough uh, of those flies here then you will be uh, seeing them again as soon as you get back to that uh, point. And uh, yeah that, that tends to make it really hard at times to uh, get past those checkpoints without uh, instantly dying. It has happened before also while I was routing this so uh, yeah it tends to be somewhat weird in that respect. Of course more flying enemies. Well. <laughs> it's fine most of the time though, I mean. So yeah, if you have actually owned this game, uh, you might want to remember that there was uh, I actually have to drop down here uh, and grab this cherry bubblegum, which, uh, if I'm not mistaken... Wait, I, I may have used it uh, for the second time. Light is real, by the way. But yeah, that makes you float up in the air like a balloon, as you may have uh, probably uh, seen before. Ah, crap. It's okay, we're still in there. We just have to... No comment. <laughs> so this is one of those checkpoints. If you do tend to go directly to the right, um, you sort of... This game has a tendency to do things like this, unfortunately. Yeah, it does. And now I have to use my continue, so... Uh... Welp. Uh, okay, let's, let's see if we can make it with the five lives that I have remaining. Um, yeah, it, it's a ridiculously long fall. But the good news is we get to start over again from uh, the same level. Um, kind of works like, you know, um, if you are in the boss fight and you lose all of your lives... Um, wait, I should go here first and I grab this uh, red gem here. Safety for everything. But uh, yeah, if you lose in a boss fight, you will have to replay the uh, previous level in order to get back to the boss. But otherwise it lets you restart over from uh, the level where you uh, were the last time. Yeah, well, believe, believe me, I've had deaths like that before, and uh, also that specifically, I've actually seen that before, but uh, it's it's very unfortunate, especially if you're uh, you know trying to survive, of course. It's okay, we we're still in there. When I was uh, first running this, I did actually have a full game over, and I did have to replay um, up uh, again from ch uh, chapter 5. And that was a run that lasted uh, 90 minutes, and when I was able to do a run where I still... Uh, well, where I didn't game over, um, I effectively cut it in half the time. So that was basically uh, sub-50 uh, what was happening then. Uh, 
remedies for safety. Beautiful. Let's see, we should be... Crap. But thankfully, most of them do actually uh, drop gems, so... I'm kind of happy about that. So, you may want to ask yourself, um, if you want to get onto the platform, why not just uh, use the green gem and uh, green uh, gum? And I've actually tried that, but... Um, I wasn't able to get myself onto that platform just yet, but that might be uh, possible, I'm not sure about that. That might require a bit of uh, further testing. Uh, and in general, I'm sure there's quite a few more optimizations that you can do with this uh, game, I guess. But so, here we go. We are onto our path towards the ruins. Actually, this is a really short level. This, uh, there's nothing to be worried about here, really. So, now we get very close to the volcano and you see those craters uh, spitting out stones and I really don't need a checkpoint because the level is like a minute long or something so it's uh, basically all we see is these lizards and there's gonna be one very rude bird here but that's about it so the rest is just like uh, run to the right um, hit jump etc well mostly hit and uh, basically before I finished my sentence, I did actually make it to the end of this level. A quick stroll to Urnum. Because that's where we're heading. So now we're gonna fight a dragon. Um, so you might want to think this also becomes a very different fight without Great Bubblegum. But hey, surprise! Here's Great Bubblegum and we're gonna use it. Right here. So we're gonna center ourselves, wait for him to appear. And we're just gonna jump up and basically stay this height and do this over and over again until he's dead. So normally speaking what I would do if I didn't have it is I would just hit him and he would fly circles around me and it tends to be quite tricky because also this dragon has very rude hitboxes but we have great bubblegum so uh, yeah we have nothing to worry about. And also that was the first level, uh, first chapter where we didn't uh, get a password, as you may have seen. So, rip passwords. But, well, at least we made it to Lost City. And we're gonna be encountering quite a few exciting enemies here. And lots of them. And sometimes uh, double of them. I'm gonna grab this grey bubble gun for later use. I'm gonna jump down here and you think, what are you doing? Um, but yeah, this is where we're going. And we're encountering ghosts. There's gonna be lots of them. So basically the reason I picked up this grape gum is because I um, I am sort of trying to get myself up this set of platforms. Um, it is also of course possible to do this by um, taking the moving platforms, but I don't I have actually tried and figured out uh, which is faster, but it doesn't seem to be a um, general conclusion there. It, it really depends on how lucky you are with uh, the bounce uh, of the Great Bubblegum. Also, um, one funny thing is, if you do use this Bubblegum on a moving platform, it instantly activates. So if you want to learn how to use Bubblegum, you should um, just chew it and then stand on the moving platform and see what happens because that's guaranteed to be very successful. Kind of wish I'd tried it out. Oh, okay. At least uh, we get to fight more ghosts. And this is actually uh, the end of this level. But don't worry, we will be encountering quite a few more ghosts in the next level, um, causing all kinds of lag. It's gonna be fantastic. So as we go through Lost City, um, it seems like we're we are about to see a palace of sorts or a castle, and uh, yeah, it seems like um, there are some secret weapons there. At least uh, one of the gang thinks so. Uh, they uh, one of the people thinks there is um, 
there are hidden wizards there, so. Yeah, so what I told you about Massive Flag, that, that's, that's the kind of stuff that's uh, happening right here. Alright. Better be safe than sorry. There we go. And like most enemies, these ghosts tend to be somewhat unpredictable in their movements, so... Um, Sometimes they just hover above your head, it seems, and uh, it's kind of hard to really get around them and take them out, so... Also, I'm checking my uh, gem counter, it seems like uh, I've got a lot of green gems right now, so... Uh, five more of these, and I do actually get an extra life, and that barely happens to me, so... <laughs> Much cause for excitement. Let's actually uh, try and keep it. Alright, so now a level which has a somewhat difficult at times, uh, or a somewhat difficult beginning at times, but the last section is ridiculously easy. So it's just getting through the first section and that's, uh, that's about it really. Hopefully. Just going up here. Okay, uh, so long gems. This is actually what I'm sort of uh, fearing about this uh, part of the level, but it seems like we're good for now. I just gotta be very careful with what's still coming up. So, I'm gonna move very slowly and see if the ghosts are appearing. It's gonna be another one from down below. Or not. Yeah, there we go. And then it's gonna be two lizards. Like that. And another ghost coming fast and these two. So many that just are basically double ghosts really. And there's gonna be one more. And yeah, that's basically uh, where th th that's basically all of the danger. So these weapons you're seeing here, uh, they are actually in fact um, what they call um, I should say this correctly uh, Plasma blasters, ancient plasma blasters. I didn't realize, I didn't find this out until recently, but that was because uh, it was actually uh, mentioned uh, in the story. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, but the manual of this game does contain uh, the storyline in full, which basically means that the yeah, which is basically like I believe 70 pages long or something. And it does tell a whole lot about the story that is not really uh, clear from the game itself. Oh crap, okay. Okay, well, didn't expect to die there. Um, I have a method of doing this and hopefully it works. Fingers crossed. I'm gonna concentrate here. There we go, that's better. I'm gonna grab this for safety. So basically what I'm doing is take this very, very spooky ghost and I'm gonna use the gun that I've gotten that I've just acquired. I'm gonna use it over here and I'm gonna do a significant amount of damage and then just run off to the other side again and do some more damage until I've finally taken him out. It's not the hardest boss because it actually is easy to get underneath, uh, to walk underneath the uh, boss here. But yeah, that's how this all works. Which brings us to the final chapter, the final battle. And we get the return of the l music of the first level, but it's not quite the same level, so there's still a difference. If you think uh, everything is going back in circles, well, not quite. Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay, let's throw stones. You can actually throw these uh, stones and uh, take out enemies that way. Now we have to wait for this moving platform here, and there we go.
Alright. So, a lot of the times you don't really have to use uh, the ladders here because... Uh, wait, I should do this first. Just to be safe. <laughs> but yeah, you, uh, um, sometimes I climb these ladders, but oftentimes you can just uh, jump the bells and just uh, skip them. Easy enough. Okay, crap, I should have timed that later. There we go. The rest of them will throw grenades. It's funny though how this part seems somewhat similar because it does end on the bridge once again. And uh, yeah, that's. I guess that's the only similarity with uh, level 1 1. So yeah, in the final battle, the Westicans do drive the Kiltish army that has been uh, that we've been fighting back to the village of Sixup, which I suspect is where we are now. So what I will do first is I'll climb this rope and I will grab a uh, red gem from here. Oh, I fell. Oops. That's fine. There we go. Of course, if I do have red gems, then I don't have to do this, but this uh, does make it. A little bit safer for as long as it counts, really. Gonna wait here just to be sure. Beautiful. There we go. So, this is why I have to duck and make sure that I do uh, use my sword correctly uh, because otherwise uh, it's not really gonna help very much. Oh no, I fell. Yeah. Well, at least there's no fall damage, so that's uh, sweet relief. That one particular fly um, <laughs> tends to be really rude. So, and as far as I know, it didn't make it to the checkpoint, so I gotta be a bit careful here. To make sure that. I wait here and then I'll just repeat the same trick over again. Uh, let's hope I do keep it around for a little bit longer than I did before. Like that. A bit of patience uh, can take you anywhere. I was gonna make sure to make it out of there fast because uh, otherwise these rocks will just uh, crush you of course. cannons, but we're not gonna fire them. Instead, we're just gonna walk on, walk on, just uh... Okay, we can leave the red gem for what it is. And we got a checkpoint, so that's great. So if you just keep on running, you don't have to worry about that uh, grenade that's uh, being thrown uh, uh, against you uh, uh, in the back, but uh, yeah. Otherwise, it would have hit you, but of course I'm fast enough to get out of there, it seems so. <laughs> Alright, so two more levels remaining. 7-3 um, turned out to be a real pain in the ass um, when I first used to route this, but um, I have quite found quite a few, well, optimizations, I guess, uh, safety, so hopefully I'll be able to do those uh, as well. So, let's hope for the best here. Here with the crater. Okay, this is where the red gems really come in handy because I'll be able to just uh, fire them from afar and just uh, take them up before I'll even take any damage from uh, their shots. <clears throat> Right, checkpoint. I really gotta make sure to really take out all of the flies here because uh, it tends to be a dangerous place. But what I might just as well do is just relax here for a bit and just uh, let this type of gum do its work. I'm not sure what type of flavor it is though. It seems like it's green gum, so perhaps lime or something, or I don't know. By the way, what I just picked up, this great gum, this is the exact reason why the final fight is 100% more safe than it used to be. Because normally speaking, I would... Um, basically what I would do, I would 
throw a, rocket, a few rocks at uh, the final boss and then I stand in the corner. Flubber gum, yeah, that might be here. Yeah. That's a good one, that's a good one. Anyway, we're gonna make it across these platforms here. Let's see, there we go, up here. Brief intermission before we encounter a few more bugs, or a few more flies here. These zigzagging flies tend to be really tricky too, if you don't really know how to uh, handle them from the beginning. Okay, so, may seem dangerous, but this is actually um, the safer way of doing this. It avoids uh, having to deal with these flies and uh, yeah, otherwise it would have uh, killed you, but uh, instead, we've landed at the final boss and this is going to be very quick, to my surprise. Well, actually not to my surprise, but we just stand over here. Let him have his fun with my uh, with the grape gum. I'll just wait here, and time is gonna be as soon as he is uh, defeated, and I'm reaching the the gem there. And that's how you rescue Wesica, Ingaba. Yeah, so I'm kind of glad it uh, sort of worked out like this. So normally speaking, what I would do, uh, yeah, I would, like I would say, I would just stand in the corner, left corner, wait for him to come up to me uh, while he's uh, throwing axes and stuff. And uh, yeah, as soon as he gets to me, I'm sort of ducking and sort of hitting my sword over and over again, button mashing, and hoping he's not uh, just crushing over, uh, walking over me and just uh, taking me out. So that tends to be very random and very luck based, but uh, yeah, thankfully there's Grape Gun which has proven to be quite the uh, killer. So yeah, uh, what also happened in the end, what you didn't see, um, was that um, Skull Jagger actually turns into a red, which seemed to indicate that um, there was going to be a sequel, but that never happened, so this is what we have to uh, deal with. Uh, also, a brief shout out, uh, before I forget, uh, to... Uh, Block Shield, I think his name is, uh, with a V instead of an O. Um, he did route a bit of Skull Jagger uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the first levels, and that did help me quite a bit in, in uh, routing this game uh, and getting myself started. So yeah, uh, thanks to him. And uh, that's, I think, all I have to say um, about this game. So uh, yeah, but, uh, just uh, thanks for watching, I guess. And um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, sword stealth feature, and uh, yeah, my first marathon, and uh, I've really enjoyed it. So uh, thanks again, and uh, I'll be hopping back into the chat and uh, enjoying the rest. And we're gonna have a fight two coming up next with uh, wild animal racing, so that's gonna be uh, something as well. So uh, yeah, take care.